What's up everybody? Thomas Kennedy here from Thomas Kennedy Art and Dark Theory Tattoo. I have another airbrush lesson for you. Today I will be showing you how to disassemble and properly clean an Iwata Eclipse. So stay tuned. All right. I have all my airbrushes laid out here, but for this lesson, like I said, I'll be teaching you how to disassemble and clean this one, the Iwata Eclipse HPCS. Um, you need to just lay out some kind of old shirt or towel. And I have this rubber pad here that I like to use. Just have some kind of nice area cleaned out so you can keep all your small pieces organized. But some of these airbrushes have tiny little pieces like this. So you want to make sure you have it laid out nice and organized so you don't lose anything. And just use an old shirt or towel, like I said, because you might get paint on it. There is more than likely still paint in some of these. So just be prepared to get paint on whatever surface you're working on. So first thing, the back piece here it just unscrews real simply like that. And I like to set it somewhere in place. Then loosen this. That loosens up your needle. Slide the needle right out. Be careful not to bend it. Set that somewhere where it won't get damaged. And then since the needle is out, that releases your trigger. So you can slide your trigger right out. Next, unscrew this part here. That will release the trigger spring assembly. Whoops. I like to leave this on there so I don't lose it. So just unthread this. And then this whole assembly will slide out. You can see it's got all kinds of paint gunk built up in there. So it really needs to be cleaned. Then next, these Iwatas, they come with their own little wrench and that is for unscrewing the front. And in here, be careful, sometimes the nozzle or nose cone, whatever you wanna call it, will be loose, just like this one. Sometimes it's stuck in there, so you might have to use some kind of tool to just real carefully break that loose like so and that's pretty much it other than of course taking the cap off but for right now i'm just going to leave that on so that little bit of paint doesn't run out so that's basically it. Now, just like I said, keep all of your stuff together. If you have multiple airbrushes, different kinds like me, just organize each one with all its own parts because some of them are different. And as you can see, some of these are really bad. A lot of dried up paint. That's the thing about the Createx paint. It is kind of rubbery, like latex almost. So after a while, especially airbrushing as much as I did last week, it will get a lot of gunk built up in there. So you gotta get all that out. If you don't clean these out regularly, they will not work right and you'll be frustrated trying to paint. So the best thing to clean these with will be a good wire brush kit like this all different sizes these are perfect for shoving down in here and up at this angle going through the paint bowl back and forth until you get all the dried up paint out of there and for these little pieces these can be tough to clean i like to just use one of the small wire brushes stick down in there and work it break everything loose and sometimes 
you will have a couple of little particles in there that's hard to reach. Now that's when an ultrasonic cleaner will come in handy. You can fill that up with a solution and let it soak and it will just vibrate like really slow and let it soak for a while and it'll break loose any little particles in there. But if you don't have one of those, you can just get some of these, which are basically the same as the wire brushes, except without the brushes on them and they're, they're all different sizes. And I actually have some that get down really small and they're perfect for sticking down in there and just kind of working it like that, breaking stuff loose. If you're having a hard time getting some of the buildup out of there. And I like to run mine under water while I'm cleaning it out. I don't know how everybody else does. I'll just hold this up under water and pick which size wire brush works best. And I'll just run it through there like that and up through here until it's clean. I can't see any paint in there. Same thing with this. You can just take these wire brushes, clean like that while you're running it underwater. You want to get all that buildup off of there. And it doesn't hurt to take that off and look up under there. That's where your spring is. It's stuck in there, so that probably means it needs to be cleaned. Most of the time it'll slide right out, but I ran tons of paint through these last week, so they're pretty bad. All right, there's your spring. And that is what the spring that pushes your trigger back up. So you wanna clean that good, clean this out as good as possible. And then once you reassemble it, your spring will just go back on like that. Then you'll put this back on. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all this cleaned out and then I will start the video back, show you where to put oil once it's all clean, where to oil it, and then just show you how to reassemble it real quick. All right, I have all my parts clean. I scrubbed them out good in the sink. Now it's time for lubrication and reassembly. So let's start with this spring assembly. One thing I like to do before I put it back together, I just like to stretch that spring out just a little bit, just to make sure in case it's gotten some wear on it, give it a little extra spring. So I just like to slide that right over there. And then this goes right back on there. Screw the back on there to hold that on. And before I tighten that all the way up, I like to lube that up. And the lube I'm using is just this super lube. It came with some of these Iwata airbrushes. I'm pretty sure you can order some more from an airbrush supply company online. It only takes a couple of drops in each little spot. So, I just kind of drip some around there and then just work it back and forth. And you'll feel when it's good and lubed up. And if you have some excess on there, you can just wipe that off. As long as it's down in there, pretty good. And then you can tighten that back up where it needs to be. And before I put the trigger back in, I usually put like a drop or two on the trigger itself and one drop right there. You'll see where the trigger goes down in there. And before you put the trigger back on, you have to look. There is, on most of these, there is a little indention there and that'll be the back 
of the trigger so that when you pull the trigger all the way back against the airbrush it kind of fits the roundness of the airbrush it can be tricky to get back in there that bottom part tries to fold over on you It's trying to be difficult. Keeps folding over on me. Or, no, it is in there. I know what happened. There is a little button in there. And while I was cleaning it, I probably got it jammed up see what that does all right that was that's what it was so if you're not getting the spring action from the trigger like you should what that means is this thing on the bottom is stuck and it can get stuck if you're cleaning it out like I did. I had something down in there scraping the paint out of that hole. And that had it jammed up. So that's one way to fix that. And I just put my quick connect back on. And once the trigger is back in there and it's spring, feel the spring action like you're supposed to. Then you can put the spring assembly back in this part facing up and that part actually has to stick up through that hole there the notch in the top and goes up against the back of the trigger and then you just thread this back in and it doesn't have to be super tight I'll just get it kind of snug and it may be kind of oily so yeah once it's snug that's good all right so just get this snug and what that's going to do is when you pull the trigger back it's going to automatically push it back forward and i'll show you in just a second but next need to put this put the front back on it and you can see there's a little black o-ring there you want to make sure that's in good condition you can order extras of these from any airbrush supply company and I think they might sell them at Hobby Lobby too so make sure that's good stick it back on there next will be this piece and before that goes on make sure this is cleaned out good like i said get any little paint particles out of there that's your nozzle and that will sit in there just like that and then this will screw down on top of there like so make sure that nozzle comes up through the middle before you thread that down and you just want to get it snug with this wrench you don't want to over tighten it just snug and then a little turn and then once you have this part cleaned out good thread that back on and I do usually tighten that part kind of snug with just a little pair of pliers or something just so it's on there good just barely snug it with those and then that allows you to just be able to unscrew this part by hand because when I'm working I take the tip off of it 
it exposes the needle so you have to be careful while you're working but I pretty much leave mine like that while I'm working so if you snug this part down with a pair of pliers just one little turn then you can unscrew this part just by hand when you need to so next make sure this is loosened up a little bit and then your needle should slide right back in make sure you've cleaned it off good make sure the tips not bent if it is or if it has any burrs on it if it's just barely bent it will not spray right so once that's good and clean slide that right back through there and you don't have to force it just you know just barely push it in there till it's snug snug that back there's no need to really crank down and over tighten anything on these you'll mess it up then just put the back on and some people leave these off while they work but i would recommend keeping it on there most of the time just because you don't want to bend the back of that needle either so Make sure every, all the springs are working the way they should. If it's not, just take it back apart. See if you missed a spot and there's still some dried up paint somewhere. Clean it. Put some super lube on it. If you don't have super lube, you can use 3-in-1 oil. I've used that on some of them when I don't have this and it seems to work just fine too. Main thing, clean it good. Take care of the needle. If it's bent, replace it. Once in a while, you might want to replace the nozzles too. Sometimes, especially if you push the needle up in there too hard, it can bend and warp the, in the tip of that nozzle. Then you need to get another one. And you'll know pretty quick when you start trying to do some fine detail stuff. If it's not spraying right, you can't lay down a nice crisp line and whip it out like you should. Then you know something's wrong. So just keep an eye on all that. If, if it's not working right, then it's something going on on the inside. So my trigger's spring, springing right back up, springing right back forward. Got the lid all nice and clean. So this one is good to go. If you have any questions, comment below make sure you subscribe to my channel so you can keep up with all the lessons um if you have a different airbrush than this let me know i can break one down i have a a few different iwatas here and i also have a pache um an old model if, if you have one you don't know how to take apart just comment and i'll get back in touch with you see if i can help you out And that's about it. If you're into tattoos, check out my page on Facebook, Dark Theory Tattoo. Hit me up on Instagram, Thomas Kennedy Art. Keep up with my latest art. I stay busy tattooing, but I do post some airbrush stuff once in a while. So subscribe, follow, all that good stuff, and stay up to date. And keep practicing. Keep practicing. Till next time, peace out.